In this video, we're going to apply the recurrence relations from the last several videos to a popular computer science puzzle called the Tower of Hanoi problem. Now, this is a puzzle game that was invented in 1883 by a French mathematician and is a common recursion problem in computer science. This puzzle, the Tower of Hanoi, is based off of a made-up legend that says that this temple in India, the Brahmins are move, have been moving a tower of 64 golden disks from one pole to another, one by one, never placing a larger disk on top of a smaller. So there's three poles. You're going to see this here in the next couple of slides. There's three poles, and we have a tower made up of disks of decreasing size. And the idea is, is they've been trying to move them all from one pole to the next. When all the disks have been transferred, the tower and the Brahmins will fall and it will be the end of the world. So again, this is a, a made up legend by the French mathematician who started this whole puzzle, whose name is Edouard Luca. Regardless, it's a fun game, and you can find places to play it online. I'm going to include this link in the video description, and I'm going to recommend you pause the video here, and you follow this link, and you try to beat the game with three discs. And then you try to beat the game with four discs, and see if you can use your solution for three discs to solve the game with four discs. And this is going to take advantage of the recurrence relation nature of this problem, the recursion nature of this problem. In a computer science class, we would be trying to program this game to see how it works using recursion. But in this, this video, it's a math video, we're going to be calculating how many moves it would take to move n disks. And so how we're going to approach this is we're going to suppose that we could move n minus 1 disks. And we're going to see if we can figure out how that could help us. All right. So if we knew how to move n minus 1 disks, could you figure out how to move all n, n disks. Think about that. To do this, we're going to start, since we know how to move n minus 1 disks, and we have n disks in this pile, so n minus 1 disks are those top disks. I'm going to take those, and again, I don't know how to do it, but we're told that we do know how to do it. So I'm going to take them, and I'm going to move them into this pole. So I'm going to say first, transfer n minus 1 disks to the middle pole. You might notice similarities to a proof by induction, right? We are somehow supposing that we can do this with a, with a quantity. And then we're going to show how, given this quantity, we can build up from there. So recursion, recurrence relations, and induction are all very closely related to one another. As this problem demonstrates... Now that we've got our n minus 1 disks moved to the middle pole, we can take that last disk and move it to the pole C. Now remember, we had some kind of an algorithm. We don't know, necessarily know how it works, but we had an algorithm that lets us move n minus 1 disks. So I can grab these n minus 1 disks and move them on to pull C. And now we've succeeded in moving all n disks. So we've solved the problem for n disks, and you might want to think about what's the extreme case, what's sort of the base case. If, if n is 1, how many moves does it take? 
Well, if you just have a single disc down here, you can move it directly in a single move. So when n equals 1, this is going to only take one move. Now I'm going to argue that this algorithm is the most efficient sequence of moves possible, even though we don't necessarily know how it entirely how it works. But we do know that in order to move that bottom disk, disk n, from one pole to another, we must first transfer the n minus 1 disks out of the way. And so in order to transfer all n disks from pole A to pole C, we must move the top n minus 1 disks twice. All right? We need to move that top n minus 1 disks at the first time so that we can free up that bottom disk to be moved to pole C. And then we need to move that that top n minus 1 disks a second time to put them onto pole C on top of that bottom disk. And as these are the exact moves our algorithm makes, our algorithm is the most efficient algorithm possible. So now let's go back through our algorithm, except we're going to give a name to the number of moves needed. So I'm going to say let m sub n be the number of moves number of moves needed to move n disks. Right? And this is what we're looking for. This is our n goal. We want to know what does m sub n equal. Well, again, I don't necessarily know the algorithm, but I know that to move n minus 1 disks off of the nth disk takes m of n minus 1 moves. Right, we're going to take the m, n minus 1, n minus 1 here, and we're going to move it into the middle, and that's going to be m of n minus 1 moves by our definition uh, where of the number of moves. Moving this bottom disk just takes one move. Right? I can move it over there in one move. Then moving this pile of n minus 1 disks on pole C on top of that last disk is going to take M of N minus 1 moves again. So let's work this out. Moving the N minus 1 disks off the nth disk, that very first move, is going to take M of N minus 1 moves. Moving that nth disk onto pole C is going to take one move. And moving the n minus 1 disks from pole B on top of that nth disk on pole C is going to take m of n minus 1 moves. So m of n is going to equal 2 times m of n minus 1 plus 1. And we have a recurrence relation. We can talk about the number of moves in, of n disks in terms of the number of moves of n minus 1 disks. Now remember, a recurrence relation always needs to have initial conditions. So we want to think about what happens if we have a tower of just one disk, and we talked briefly about that earlier, that's going to require just one move. You move it from pole A to pole C and you're done. So this is our recurrence relation. So we have a recurrence relation, but we really don't have an answer yet. We still don't know how many moves it's going to take to move all the blocks, the 64 blocks, uh, 64 golden disks that are part of the puzzle. To do this, we're going to have to calculate m of 64 is going to be 2 times 
m of 63 plus 1. And m of 63 is going to be 2 times m of 62 plus 1. And m of 62 is going to be 2 times m of 61 plus 1. And so on. And I'm going to get really tired of doing that really, really quickly. And so our goal, as in the previous videos, is we want to convert this to an explicit formula. Now you might notice that this problem is actually very similar to the one in the previous video. Uh, that one, the only difference is we had a 3 instead of a 2 in front of our term right here. But we're still going to walk through this. We're going to use the same hint as before, the sum of a geometric sequence. But let's walk through this. So um, if you want to pause the video right now and try to do this on your own after without re-watching the last video or with re-watching it, that might be a great exercise. Okay, m of 2 is going to be 2 times m of n minus 1. That's going to be m of 1 plus 1, which is going to be 2 times m of 1 is 1 plus 1. Which I'm just going to kind of simplify as 2 plus 1 m of 3 is going to be 2 times m of 2 plus 1, which I'm going to write as 2 times 2 plus 1 plus 1, and then I'm going to simplify this as 2 squared plus 2 plus 1. And we can continue this. times, now we're doing m3, so this is 2 squared plus 2 plus 1, all plus 1, can't lose that last one, and this is going to be 2 cubed plus 2 squared plus 2 plus 1, and finally 2 and the fourth plus 1, room for this. Except I'm going to write this now as 2 to the 1 and that 1 as 2 to the 0. So what we now have is that m sub n, I'm going to just go straight to writing this as a summation. This is from i equals 0 to, now this is the part you have to pay attention, the bounds. Here we have m sub 5 and we go up to, to 4. And so you don't want to mess that up, which means for a problem going up to n, our upper bound is going to be n minus 1. So that's really important. You want to make sure you get that right. And then this is going to be the sum of 2 to the i. And we can use that formula up above in the hint to calculate that this is equal to the... Now here, I'm going to make a couple of notes again. So here we have, instead of n, we have n minus 1, which is totally allowed as long as we substitute that in properly. So n minus 1 plus 1 is going to give us just n. So I'm just going to kind of write that out. And we're going to get this is r to the n minus 1. And r, I was not thinking there. R in this situation is 2. 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 minus 1. Well, we can simplify this and it's just 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so this is how many moves we're going to have to make given n disks.
and hopefully this was familiar from the previous video. So we have a formula, but we still don't know how long it's going to take. Our goal is to figure out how long it's going to take to move the 64 golden discs in our legend. So to figure out how long that will take, let's figure out how many moves this is. So we know it's 2 to the 64 minus 1. And I'm going to let you work that out. And you probably want to use a calculator on your computer, not a calculator. Scientific calculator is going to uh, give you this in scientific notation, which is going to round it. So if you don't do that, this is 18. Four, six, seven, four, four, zero, seven, three, seven, oh, nine, five, five, one, six, one, five moves. So I don't even know what that is. There's thousands, millions, billions, trillions. So this is. 18 million trillion. I don't know what, uh, this is the trillions place. I don't, I don't know how you get what the numbers are above trillion. So I'm going to call this 18 million, 18 million trillion. Big numbers. Exponentials grow large. Right? So this is an awful lot of moves. But we still don't know how long this is going to take. To figure that out, we're going to need to make some assumptions as to how fast the monks can move these discs. To do that, let's assume that the monks can move one disc a second, which is still pretty fast given that 64 discs, you're going to have some very large golden discs that are going to be heavy. So I'm going to use the real numbers in my calculations, but I'm only going to write an uh, abbreviated form here. So this is really, I'm using the whole number, but I'm going to write an abbreviated form this many seconds. And then if we divide this by 60, we're going to find that this is 3 times 10 to the 17 minutes. Which is 5 times 10 to the 15 hours, if we divide by 60 again, which is equal to 2 times 10 to the 14 days, dividing by 24, which if we divide this by 365, we're going to get that this is 5, 8, 4, Nine four two four one seven three five five years. The monks will be done in five hundred and eighty four, almost eighty five billion years. Now the sun only has approximately. 5 billion years left. Which means that it's going to take the, the, the monks five, uh, 100 times longer than the lifetime that we have left of our sun to finish this. So I'm not really worried about them finishing this. And the earth or the sun dying, as is in the myth or the legend. So this is a fun problem. This is a nice application of these recurrence relations. And this is also a fun recursion programming problem, though I'll leave that to another class.